Manchester United 3, Aston Villa 2. Here are the official player ratings from the United Hotspot. I'll start off in goal. Andre Onana. I felt like Onana had a sloppy first half, conceding two goals that perhaps he could have avoided. He had moments where he came out and I think he did not make the right touch on the ball. So out of 10 across the entire game, and I think this is because of an improved second half, I would give him a 6 out of 10. That's Andre Onana. Right back, one Bisaka. Bisaka was fighting for every ball. He's trying to fight his way back into the starting team. I'm not sure if Luke Shaw was in the squad, he would have started. If Luke Shaw was fit, I'm not sure he would have started on the right. Probably Diogo Dalot would be ahead of him. But didn't he put on such a solid performance? Doing what we know him for, stealing every ball, going into every tackle. I thought, for me, one Bisaka deserved a proper 7 out of 10. On the left, Diogo Dalot, inverted, playing uh, le on the left back, yet he's right-footed. He's a natural right back or wing back at times. I thought he put in a very good shift. I think he was slightly close to a one Bisaka. I would be torn between the two. I would also give him a 7 out of 10. That's Diogo Dalot. I thought he had a good game. Oh, probably 7.5 because he gave us a little more as well going forward. So I'll give him a 7.5 out of 10. Central defense, Rafael Varen. I don't think Varen was so visible in the game, but he did what he had to do. I would give him a uh, Varen, I would give him a 6.5 out of 10. I think he was slightly below one Bisaka and Dalot. I do not think he was as visible as he was against Liverpool. Uh, then Johnny Evans. Wow, this guy. How old is he? I mean, 35, but still bossing the Premier League like he's, you know, 28. I think we've not, even in, during his prime at Man United, I think Johnny Evans was, wasn't as good as he has shown us he can be in certain games. So confident, so comfortable. He's the true definition of experience in football. So for me, Johnny Evans will get a proper 8 out of 10. I think he was our best defender on the night. Go into the middle, Kobe Maino. Well, I always want him to be the man of the match. Anyway, ever since his advent, I think he's been my best man, my man of the match anyway. But for this particular one, I think I would give Kobe Maino a 7.5 out of 10. He had a few wrong passes, you know, not accurate, you know, losing the ball, but he still controlled the midfield. Many times he was left alone in the middle, but he was comfortable there. In fact, if Eric Ten Hag wants to keep playing a single pivot, I think with Kobe Maino there, he can maybe over time grow into it and be able to handle it because as it looks, Eric Ten Hag is for a single pivot, isn't he? So Kobe, 7.5 out of 10. Uh, then Christian Eriksen. I felt for me, Christian Eriksen was the mastermind of the Manchester United victory. He may not have assisted all goals, he may not have, but for me, he was the mastermind playing the killer passes. He was uh, orchestrating things from the middle. I think actually he plays well. With If we are playing a single pivot, I think it should be Christian Eriksen playing close to Maino. I think Eric Ten Hag got this one quite right. Never mind the struggles we had in the first half. So Eriksen, I think for me, will get 8.5 out of 10. Bruno Fernandes as well. He had a record, I think, the most balls in the box. I think five in the Premier League. Uh, such a beautiful record. Bruno plays well with Eriksen. I think they had figured them, each other out before Eriksen got injured in November. I think they had learned to play, to play together. And they are smart players who give you something going forward. They will always be able to play that killer pass. I think they bounce off each other in terms of their brilliance. And I thought they showed that, that again in this game. So for me, and the two were close. Maybe Bruno could have slightly been maybe ahead. But I, I would give him 8.5 as well out of 10. They will be both, I think, uh, tallying for me. Uh, then we go forward. Uh, 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 Alejandro Ganacho, obviously, was the man of the match, scored a brace. He had moments where I thought he was selfish. He could have uh, found, for example, at some point, he could have assisted. Uh, I think if he, had, if he had passed that ball to Rasmus Hoyland and didn't try to go for goal himself, I think that would have been a goal. So I think because of that, and uh, of course he, he he changed the game. His goals, you know, changed the game for United. So there is no way you can take it away. That's why he was the man of the match. So a 9 out of 10 deserves, he, he deserves, but he had mistakes that he can improve in the next game. But those were erased by his performance. So Ganacho, 9 out of 10. Marcus Rashford was another big, big player, mastermind in this game. Rashford is, was in that, with that performance, 
he proved that he was back. He was making the right runs. He was this time, I think, making better decisions, putting himself up, his head up and trying to find Hoyland and passing when he had to pass, uh, playing around, going in the middle and on the right. I thought that uh, for the first time we saw something I've always wanted. We've seen, we saw uh, Ganacho and, 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 uh, and Marcus Rashford, our wingers, you know, switching, one going on the right, then switching on the left, then switching the other side, right and left. That interplay, that, the, the, that, that switching, I thought uh, looked a bit good and I think it makes, it, it causes trouble for defenses they go in the middle then go out wide you know i thought that uh, that is uh, that mobility had been lacking and when we got it i think we looked very difficult to manage that's why we were we causing problems for aston villa but for marcus rashford i think he had another very good game i would give him uh i think he was the closest to ganacho and probably they were, they were he didn't score but i think he impacted the game so much so i'll give him 8.8 out of 10 yeah 8.8 .8 out of 10. I'll just put him slightly below Ganacho. Then up front, our man, the star man, the star boy, Rasmus Hoyland. Now, he had, again, every run right. He's a guy who will always make the right runs. He was always in the right places, at times never given the ball. I felt like the goal was just to, to, to sum up what he was doing all game. It was going to be frustrating if Hoyland hadn't scored in this game. But it's good he scored, and it's a winning goal, an important goal, a crucial goal of the game. If uh, Ganacho had not scored two goals, probably could have taken the man of the match award because of that winning goal he scored. So I would give Hoyland a proper, for his goal, first Premier League goal, how it came, and winning being a winning goal, I would give him 8.9 out of 10. I would put him between Marcus Rashford and Alejandro Ganacho. I'll give him an 8.9 out of 10. That's Rasmus Hoyland. That's how I would rate him. That's for me, the player ratings. Now, Eric Ten Hag, team selection, I think he, he got it, I won't say spot on, uh, but I thought his selection was good. The team looked balanced. Even when we were trailing, you never felt at any one point that we we're going to be beat. I think we, feel, we still felt like we we're always in the game. So I would give Eric Ten Hag for his team selection an 8 out of 10. I thought it was a good one. And then the entire team together, the whole unit, I think this was a, high, a highly spirited performance. This was a typical Manchester United performance. The team was playing as a unit. They were playing for each other. They were running and fighting for every ball. They had the fire and the desire. Maybe it was because of the announcement of Sadim Ratcliffe and knowing that their jobs are on the line, knowing that Sir Dave Braithford was in the director's box watching each player and every move they are, they are making. The fight was on for whichever reason. And for that reason, I would give the entire team a proper 9 out of 10 because this, is a, this was a proper Manchester United performance. That is, for me, the player ratings and my match reaction from that important 3-2 victory over Aston Villa. What do you think?